hi hello good morning my lovely viewers good evening good afternoon depending on the part of the world you're watching me now yeah um actually my name is joined in dbc and uh, i have something that i want to share with you this morning yeah i'm speaking to you live from united kingdom yeah i want to share the word of god with you yes uh my topic is uh, anxiousness anxiousness which means worriness yeah but before i proceed i would like you to open your bible but before i proceed i would like to um make a short prayer um our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us these days our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for that is your kingdom forever and ever amen yes my lovely brothers and sisters uh, before i proceed i would like you to open your bible in the book of philippians chapter 4 verse 4 this message is for those who always worry about things of life. I want you to know that in any, as a child of God, in any condition you are, you don't need to worry. Whatever it is, you don't need to be worried about it at all. Yes, you don't need to worry about what you're facing in life. Because your, your, your aim shouldn't be of what you achieve or shouldn't be the things you have not achieved in this world it shouldn't be it shouldn't be something that should bother you or the um or the challenges of life or um the the points or the position you see yourself it shouldn't be your problem it should be your problem but you don't have to allow it to control you you don't you have to allow your problem to control you you understand you don't have to be anxious of anything at all because jesus said if i can take care of the beds if i can feed them if i can take care of the 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 the, the, the um, flowers if i can take care of the flowers if i can the grass if i can take care of them why can't i take care of you you see so before i proceed i would like to I would like you to open your Bible in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Any condition you find yourself, you don't have to start saying, some of you, when things get so tough, all you could do, you begin to look for a way to, to give up. You begin to murmur. You begin to worry yourself. Why am I in this condition? Am I the only one serving God? What is happening? And God, where are you? Why are you doing? Why did you allow this kind of thing to happen to me? Blah 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 blah. But you don't know. You begin to disturb people around you. You don't know that God is trying. Maybe God is trying to test you by withholding that thing or if he allow you to have that thing maybe you will forget about him so therefore he's trying to put it through so that you 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 um you build yourself you understand he's trying to put you through so that you build yourself before he, um, he releases whatever it is to you whatever condition you find yourself you don't have to start murmuring disturbing yourself giving yourself high blood pressure worrying yourself and all that pray put it in petition i will get to that place he said bring it to me put it in writing petition supplication um, um, um petition supplication or in prayers he is capable before, he said before you before you open your mouth to ask anything from him he knows your problem 
He knows what you have. He, I mean, what is bothering you. He knows everything in your heart. He knows all. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Verse 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. If you call yourself a Christian, you are worrying about the things of the world. When a sinner comes and worries, because that is their life, they worry about material things of the world. They don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have that, any little thing. Nothing, nothing helps them to, you know, to focus their mind when those worries come. Nothing hold it back. You as a child of God, you are supposed to embrace the word of God. It is the word of God that will suppress that, uh, those nonsense out of your heart. When the worries, worries come, he said, no. It is written in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Jesus said, be anxious for nothing. And you see that worry will, just, will get out from your heart. Many of us don't carry the word of God with us. Word of God is the sword of the spirit that we use it to say, Satan, get out. If you don't have it, he comes any angle to disturb your life. Before you know it, that is why you see some of you, before you know it, you fall. Because you have nothing that moisturizes your belief, your faith in the Lord. You don't have anything at all that much arise. You don't have any word of God with you that make you to stand in difficult time. Because if you're a child of God, difficult times will come. Temptation will come. Persecution will come. If you don't have the word of God with you, how can you stand? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Let whatever problem you are passing through, whatever challenges that you are passing through, whatever anything at all bothering that your heart, put it in writing or you can pray. Once you just pray our Lord's Prayer, some of you will pray from money tonight. You go to evangelism, um, I say evangelism, you go to um, um, night vigil, you pray from money to night. Our God is not a death, it's not death. Once you close your eye and you say, our Father who art in heaven, our Lord's prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Pray it. Everything is sorted out. You don't need long prayer. The only thing that matters is put the word of God into deeds and action. If only you can practice what you read, if you are somebody who study the word of God, if only you can put it into effect. Be watchful because all, the word of God says, be vigilant for the rolling lion is looking for who to devour. If you can be watchful, put the word of God into practice, deeds, and action. My dear, nothing will fall you down. Sorry for using Igbo language. Nothing will, will fall you down. When you are shaking in different angles, you stand. I am telling you the gospel truth. Embrace the word of God. Put it, let it walk through. Practice it. Don't just read it. Don't allow anybody to be. Some of you is Sunday, Sunday when they go to church, they carry their Bible. When the uh, pastor will read one or two verses, that is it. When they get, get home, they dump it. They dump the Bible behind them. Only Sunday. That is when they open the Bible. And when you are out there, you 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 distress yourself in front of people because Satan goes into people if you find out that you are a child of God he goes into them in order to come and in order to come and uh, 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 attack you it comes in different angles it can come by you know somebody will just come and you know start looking for one problem or the other towards you that is why you have to package yourself well with the word of God put on the whole armor of God the helmet of salvation and the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, so that you can be able to stand. We stand in the in the difficult time. 
He said, put it in petition, in, re- in petition, prayer, supplication, and let your request be known to God. When something happens, you don't, you haven't even asked God. You haven't confirmed from God. You haven't put it through to God and say, God, look, look, look. You are already murmuring. You are already giving yourself worry. Worry is already, the high blood pressure is high already. Why are you worrying when you have a powerful father seated upon the heaven, watching over you every day? The life you breathe, the air you breathe, everything on you. He is the one giving it to you. Why are you worrying? You shouldn't be worried about the things of the world. Your father is capable. Just wait patiently. It will come to you. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You are not alone. Well, you are not alone. You don't need to be thinking of nonsense. You don't need to be allowed those worries to get rid of your beautiful heart. Push it away. It belongs to Satan. Say, come on, get out. Get out behind me. I have a place that I'm aiming to go to. Even if I die while serving me, he will, him and his father will welcome me home. Get out. I rebook you. It comes in different way. It can come in worriness. It can come in uh, 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 unforgiveness. That in so many ways he comes to attack you. You just have to be watchful. Watchful and be vigilant. He said, verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. This is the word of Jesus, our, the word of our Lord Jesus. He said, whatever you hear about him, Whatever you 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 um, whatever things you have learned, you have received, you had everything you know is pure and is the truth and is of the good report. It is noble. Okay, then um, in nineteen he said the things which you learned, received, had and saw in me, please do this and the God of peace will be with you. Meditate on them. Another thing is that some people they study the word of God. But things of the world occupy the brain. Business occupy your brain. Money occupy your brain. Everything occupy your brain. You don't even have single time to meditate when you are in that your uh, 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 free time. When you are in your free time, even if you are in the car driving, if you are in the car, in the bus, anywhere, that time that you don't have anything doing, use it to meditate in the word of God. Use it to commu- communicate with the Spirit, the Spirit of God in you. Communicate. It will help your spiritual life. It will help you to grow more in the Lord. When you might have studied the Word of God, that He said, be not anxious of anything. You, com- you, you begin to meditate, meditate, and con- use it to, uh, 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 let me say, check your life. When you study the Word of God, you use it to compare and look inside your life. Look at those areas that you know that is not um, you are not doing well. You check it. Then it will suppress all those all those rubbish character. That is why you see some people when they are newly born again, when they have given their life to Christ, with the word of God, when they start studying the word of God, little by little by little by little, you see all those nonsense, all those things. They have given their life to Christ. Everything God has, because Jesus said, if any man be in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all have become new. But with the Spirit of God, it will help you. Everything will just vanish away. By the time you begin to study the Word of God, you will see yourself, your life, everything will transform. The Spirit of God will work in your life. But I don't know, some people, they call themselves Christian. When you see them, you will be like, are you sure? If you see the kind of words that comes out from your heart, So he said, whatever you have received, receive about him, whatever you have learned about him, 
whatever you know about him, whatever you saw about Jesus, meditate. Don't allow money to occupy the whole memory. Don't allow a hustle, hustle of things of life. Don't allow those things only to occupy your brain. Try to bring that time to meditate in the word of God. Then in verse um, 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Then in verse 19, and he said, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. He said, Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of sister household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So my brother, my beloved brother, my beloved sister, don't worry about whatever you are passing through at all. Worryness will bring high blood pressure, will give you sickness, will bring so many things. Some of you we will even end up getting mad. That is why you see some of them. Devil will make you because of all those things you are applying, you allow it to eat up you. You allow it to to take over your life. Before you know it, you see yourself running mad. Before you know it, you see yourself behaving abnormal. Some of you will start getting drunk, start doing things that you don't do before. You begin to fall from from, from your position in Christ. You are a child of God. Whatever you are passing through, God knows. He knows what you are passing through. He said before we open our mouth to speak, He knows. Then if you are somebody who have not given your life to Jesus, my dear my dear sister, my dear brother, my beloved, beloved brother and sister, Jesus loves you. He loves you by going to the cross of Calvary to die for you. Nobody can do it for you. It's because of the love he had for you. And he wants us to do that to every one of us. So I want you to, if you have not given your life to him, I want you to go back to the cross. Come back to him. He loves you. I'm telling you, Jesus loves you. You can see that people are dying every day. Death here and here. You don't know when your time will come. You don't know when Jesus will say, hello, it is time. Come back home. It's time for you to leave the world. Do not... Uh, uh, do not continue to wait and, or continue to say, oh, because of the little things you are enjoying in the world. Those things are vanity. When death come, you wouldn't see them anymore. Judgment come. What will you tell Jesus that you did? That you are busy enjoying uh, things, uh, fornication, adultery, all kind of filthy things in the world. Corruption. Because of material things of the world. My beloved brother and sister, turn around. Jesus loves you. Give your life to him. Give your life to him. Give your life to him. Then you will be a man that will walk with God spiritually. You will enjoy everything in Lord. Everything. He said, without me, you are nothing. Without me, you cannot do anything. He loves you. He loves you. He's waiting to receive you. Turn around and say, Jesus, I am sorry. I am sorry for the kind of life I have lived. I want you to be my, my father. I want you to be my God. I want you to be my everything. I want to serve you. Me and my household want to serve you. Come into my life. Come into my heart to dwell. Accept him. Your life will never remain the same. Jesus satisfied. He gives peace of mind. He gives love. He gives everything. Everything you want in this world. He will give it to you. He's a wonderful man. If you know him, your life will never remain the same. You'll be a man who will live in in, in, in peace you will learn how to love others when when you eat you remember that oh, i have a brother who, are, who, are, who have nothing to eat you will know that jesus said pure religion that i receive is to care for the orphans the prisoners the the, the sick people in the hospital you will be somebody who will have the hot heart of others he said treat others the way you would like to be treated you will be a man who, who will live your life that now anybody who, who 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 did anything wrong to you you forgive it's not in your hands to go and begin to plan evil. Jesus said, vengeance belongs to me. Vengeance belongs to Jesus. He is the one who has the right to pay back. Pay back whatever. Your own is to pray. Pray for your enemy. He said, pray for those who spitefully use you. Bless those who curse you. 
That is why he said, do good to your enemies. Make your heart free. If you do all those things, put away anger, bitterness, worries and anxiety, depression. All those things belong to Satan. If you're somebody who is still living in sin, by the time you have turned around and accept Jesus into your life, everything will get out. Everything. Happiness will occupy your heart. Anyone who has Jesus, you have everything in life. Forget about whatever you are enjoying in the world. They are all vanity. Vanity upon vanity. And Jesus said that use your earthly riches to help others. That if you are doing this, you are banking your riches in heaven. That where your treasure is, is where your mind will be. So my dear lovely brother, my dear sister, if you have not found Jesus, open your heart for him to come in, for him to transform your life, for him to change you, to change you to be a better person. And you enjoy his blessing, you enjoy his, his, his salvation that is waiting for you. When you die, you die a peaceful man and you go and continue the enjoyment. He said, I am going home to prepare a mansion for you. That's where I am, is where you will be. A sinner is not going to be in the kingdom of God. A fornicator will not be there. A, a adulterer will not be there. A, a thief will not be there. A, 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 a somebody who share blood. Somebody who worship idol. Somebody who causes false witness. Uh, who bear false witness. Who causes disagreement with um, between others. A proud person is not found in the kingdom of God. Somebody who is selfish, greed, is not found in the, in the kingdom of God. You must be a giver. Learn how to give. To, to love others, to share with others, treat others the way you would like to be treated. Those are the people who are found in his kingdom. The rich man came, was asking him, Jesus, what can I do for me to enter your kingdom? He said, serve me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your, uh, 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 your soul. He said, Lord, I have done this. What else can I do? He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He said, I have done this. What can I do? He said, Go and sell all, your, uh, 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 all you have and use the money to take care of the poor. The rich man looked at him and said, what are you saying? And he left. Jesus said, it will be very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. But it will be easy for the, for the poor man to come into my kingdom. I believe every one of us have also heard the story of the rich man and Lazarus. So my lovely brother, my sister, I will bring another um, message for you. If you have not given your life to Christ, please, I would like you to turn around and do so. Your life will never remain the same. All those things that bothers you, that worries your mind, you are worried, you are going up and down looking for one uh, stupid idol to ask questions about your problem and all that. When you have your God who, who, who knows, who sees you every day, who knows what is going on, who is waiting for you just to turn around and accept him and say your problem, it shall be done. You are just worrying yourself, giving yourself high blood pressure, thinking things that is that that uh, doesn't worth it. Use your head for God. Use your memory for God. Use your life for God. Your life will never remain the same. And for those of you who are Christian, I want you to continue, continue, never get tired, never uh, uh, give up. Do not allow peril to get to that. Do not allow famine in it, whatever it is to to make you to begin to think otherwise. Instead, stand up and say you. Get out. You peril famine, I destroy you. The, our Lord Jesus has promised that he will take, he is capable to take care of my problem, to take care of the things that I want. I don't need, I don't, I, I don't have business with you. Get out of my sight. I, I destroy you, Satan. Pack your load and get out. Get out. And that is it. Pray. Pray. Tell God what you want. It will be sorted out. You will pray and you will have patience. You continue. Even if you pray, it's not coming. Continue. Praying and rejoicing in the Lord. When you go out every day, you see, you you smile, you do everything happy. Put wear that happy face. Let not nobody see that. Oh, you are suffering. Oh, this one is suffering. I look at you say a Christian. I don't know where your own Christianity. Let it, if you are like that, the devil will be laughing at you. But if you package yourself, if you come out, you want you dress, look fine, look decent, you smile. Nobody will look at you and say this one is really suffering. I'm telling you the gospel truth. And Jesus will be happy with you because the way you are, he knows your problem. He knows whatever your problem. You don't need to begin to nag, begin to worry, begin to get worked up. That is people who, who sinners, that's how they do. 
so you have to show different i'll see you in my next video my lovely viewer have a lovely and a wonderful day see you in my next video goodbye